Hello Ladybugs and Serendipity students, Miss Carla here and welcome to the second week of our Great Artists Week. Today I'm going to be talking to you about my one of my favorite painters. His name was Rene Magritte and I have a book to read to you. It's kind of a long book but it has a lot of really awesome pictures in it so maybe if it's too long you could stop for a little while in the middle and then come back to it so that you can see all of the cool art inside of it. The book is called Now You See It, Now You Don't, Rene Magritte, and it's written by Angela Wenzel. <clears throat> show you this. This house in Brussels, the capital of Belgium, was the home of René Magritte and his wife Georgette for over 20 years, from 1930 to 1954. And here's a picture of the house right here. <clears throat> René enjoyed reading detective and mystery stories and loved the cinema. Most of all, he liked thrillers and comedies with Laurel and Hardy or Charlie Chaplin. Sometimes, for his own entertainment, he actually made some very funny films himself, in which he appeared along with Georgette and their friends in unusual and imaginative disguises. René Magritte was a painter. Behind the curtained windows in his house, he sat in front of his easel and painted pictures which are disquieting and mysterious, full of surprises, and often unfathomable. There's a picture of him behind his wife there. That's him peeking out from behind her. Here is a self-portrait that he painted. For René Magritte, the whole world was full of mysteries and puzzles. He was interested in what was hiding behind things. Here, for example, when looking at an egg, he already sees the mature bird that at some point will hatch out of it. Why are Magritte's paintings so mysterious? Magritte used to have a very inquisitive way at looking at simple everyday objects which everyone knows very well. In his pictures, he then transformed them into peculiar apparitions. Are they really just normal things? All of a sudden, a comb, a glass, a piece of soap, a shaving brush, and a match become enormous, way too big to be usable, and are shown in a bedroom that has walls decorated with a glorious cloudy sky instead of wallpaper. As a result, all of these ordinary objects appear new and exciting, objects which nobody otherwise would pay attention to because they are completely normal. Look how small the bed is, and how big the comb is, and the soap, and the glass. René Magritte did not recount stories in his paintings like writers or poets who express themselves in words. As a painter, Magritte could make his thoughts visible in pictures. What a horrible meal! Would you want to eat that? Let's read about it. This slice of ham has an eye in the middle, and it's staring right up at us and seems to be watching. Who wouldn't lose their appetite? The painter gave this work the title, The Portrait. A portrait is actually a picture of a person, usually painted so that you can see a true likeness. Look at this person here. What's unusual about him? Look at him. Here, René Magritte has painted a self-portrait, yet something isn't right this time either. As if it were the most natural thing in the world, he's cutting up his food with a knife and fork, and at the same time, he's pouring a glass of wine while feeding himself some bread. Four hands make light work. Two portraits. Magritte seldom painted completely normal portraits. He found it boring when the model was immediately recognizable and there was nothing unusual to see in the picture. When friends or acquaintances asked him to paint their portrait, he would think up surprising things. Like with Edward James. 
He was an important person for Magritte since, as a rich art collector, he had bought several of his paintings. Magritte came up with a clever idea. He showed James from behind, standing in front of a mirror. Normally, his face would be seen reflected in the mirror, as in this photograph. Small down here, so I'll put it right close. And then here, of course, is the painting. But in this portrait, it's different. In the mirror, the back of his friend's head appears a second time, as you can see. Or actually, none at all. Who is that then? A flash of light, like from a camera, takes the place of a man's head. Man Ray, a famous photographer who knew Magritte very well, photographed James several times. This photo served as a model for this unusual portrait. There's the photograph, but there's the portrait. The Stone Age. Everything in this room has turned to stone, as if an unseen hand has touched it with a magic wand. The man, the lion, and the candle flame are frozen in a state of motionlessness. Soft things, the animal's fur, the man's coat, the tablecloth, and the fruit in the bowl, have become as hard as stone. An eerie stillness spreads over the picture. Can a stone be as light as a cloud? How can I paint a stone so that it is worth showing? Magritte asked himself. When a completely normal stone floats like a cloud over the sea, it suddenly appears interesting and mysterious. This is a very strange mermaid indeed. Who has ever heard of a water nymph then? that rather than having a fish's tail, has a fish's head instead. In any case, the mermaids we know from fairy tales look completely different, don't they? René Magritte painted his mermaid with the beautiful long legs of a woman and the large head of a body of a, and body of a fish. And once again, our way of seeing things has been turned upside down. He often made use of such tricks by switching top and bottom, big and small, inside and outside, alive and dead. It's a topsy-turvy world. And here is that strange mermaid again. Look at these strange boots here. The front half of the shoes here are actually the toes that are normally inside them. In these pictures, nothing remains the way we usually imagine things to be. We see the world with new eyes and are made to think about things we would other size, otherwise never consider. What's in front and what is behind? A woman is riding through the woods. Most of the trees are behind her and the horse. That is why the tree trunk in the middle of the painting is hiding part of her body. But wait, how can that be possible? Immediately to the left of the woman, there is a tree that is actually growing much further behind the one in the middle, and yet it is hiding her arm and part of her stomach and left hindquarters of the horse. To the right of the rider and the foreground and background have become completely confused. Her left hand and part of the horse vanish altogether, although this is actually a gap between two trees where we can look right into the background. So you can see again, it's like the background has become part of the foreground. Curtains can be very mysterious because they hide something that not everyone should see. Curtains drawn across a window, for example, stop curious neighbors from looking in. 
A stage curtain in a theater increases the tension before the performance begins. The curtains in this picture, though, are mysterious just because they obviously do not conceal anything. They are alone on the beach in the dark, like actors on a stage. A narrow crescent moon bathes the strange scene in silvery light. The middle curtain is not made of any material at all. Although it is slightly in front of the other two curtains, it seems like an opening through which a pale blue cloudy sky can be seen. Peculiar Views Astonishingly enough, this seagull doesn't have its usual plumage, but rather a dress of clouds. At first it seems as if it is flying in the deep blue sky. Then again, the bird doesn't appear to have a solid body at all. Its outline seems like an opening in the night sky through which the bright of day can be seen. Magritte opens up the sky to show a second one beyond. Both day and night. Here as well, Magritte combines a night scene and a daylight sky at the same time in one picture. The somber darkness of the night dominates the bottom half of the painting. Only a street lamp and the light in an upstairs room shine in the night and are reflected in the water in front of the house. The sky, on the other hand, is as bright as during the day. The dark outline of the trees stands out sharply against the clear blue sky and its soft white clouds. Magritte painted several such pictures. He was very preoccupied with day and night. This recall of day and night seems to me to have the power to surprise and enchant us, he once said in a television interview. This is a painting that always the Ladybug students love to see. What is that coming out of the fireplace? Mysterious Relationships one night, as Magritte recounted, an unusual thing happened to him. He woke up to find himself in a room with a bird cage, and inside the cage was a bird. Suddenly, instead of seeing the bird in the cage, there was a big egg, or so he thought. Somehow or other, the cage and the egg appeared closely related in a most mysterious way. Many of Magritte's paintings show objects that, at first glance, do not seem to be related to each other in any way. He often spent a long time thinking about different objects which, when shown next to each other in one picture, would confront the viewer with an unfathomable mystery. In his opinion, each object only has one other object with which it could possibly be combined. So here's a picture of the cage with the giant egg in it. And now I'm going to read to you about the train coming through the fireplace. What do a steam engine and a fireplace have in common? Everybody is familiar with a steam train. How could Magritte give it the magic of something out of the ordinary? The solution was to combine it with another equally well-known object, namely with a fireplace. That seemed much more unsettling and mysterious to him than if he had painted a Martian, an angel, or a dragon next to the train. The real mystery can only be shown when using everyday things. The names of things. There we go. Make sure you can really see this. This is not a pipe. Magritte wrote in French on this picture. Of course it is a pipe, isn't it? Can you fill it? Magritte asked an observer. No, of course you can't, since it is only a picture. If I had written, this is a pipe, under the picture, I would have been lying. This is not a pipe, but only a picture of a pipe. René Magritte felt that no object is really so bound to its name that it could not be substituted for another equally suitable word. This is probably one of his most famous paintings. René Magritte was a painter whose mysterious pictures teach us to look at the world with new eyes. 
he led a completely normal life as an ordinary citizen painting his pictures on an easel in the living room. He didn't like traveling, feeling most comfortable at home. Magritte died in 1967 at the age of 68, having spent most of his life in Brussels. Today, many people know him as the man with the black bowler hat. On the right, you can see a picture he painted of such a man, and even here he couldn't help hiding the face. Everything we see is hiding something else, Magritte said, and he meant that we always want to see what is hidden behind another object. This is his way of arousing our curiosity, but we will never actually know who is hiding behind this apple. Is it the painter himself or one of his friends? We will never completely solve the mysteries of René Magritte. And here is a picture of him right there. There's a photograph. And what is it that he's holding up in front of his face? He's got a black bowler hat on. He has an apple in front of his face. Very similar to this famous painting here. Well, I hope you enjoyed learning about Rene Magritte. I hope you liked looking at the paintings. I think they're just fascinating. And tomorrow we're going to be doing some really fun art projects like Rene Magritte. So I will see you then. Have a great night. Bye-bye.